Hey everybody, welcome back. Steve here from Steve's Garage. Sunday fun day, another beautiful day here in Western Mass. Got old Earl down the end here keeping an eye on me. What we're doing today is I'm going to change this headlight over to halogen and you can see this one in here, I've already got my halogen bulb and it really worked out pretty well. I did one first because there's a lot of trial and error on this sort of thing. So um, let's show you how we did it. So just to give you an update on other things, I um, needed a little room on my dash. So this is this really cool voltmeter going in here. Volt on off lights. This would be the horn button. And this is the, shows the fuel gauge in the Model A. And my um, key and light switch, as you can see, protrude out quite a bit here. You know, it's like a couple of inches, you know. So I had to add on this piece of wood to the back of the dash to build it out from the uh, from the car. I still haven't sanded it and polyed it yet, but that's on the top of the list. I just figured I'd keep on going with it and, uh, and I'll finish it off when I'm done. So I still got you know all the wiring and there's a hundred things I got to do still. So I'll show you that afterwards in the dash. So, we've been having lots of weather here. We had a huge snowstorm. I think all of, you, all of you got hit with the snow out there. And uh, pretty much most of the country. And we had a foot of it here. And then a couple days later, we had a big rainstorm. So weird weather happening. But I think that's the way it's gonna be from now on in. I was just saying this morning, my darling wife, that uh, we uh, seem to be in this pattern now where every winter is getting greener and greener. So not a lot of complaints from a lot of people, I'm sure, but I did see where that wind surge in the storm in Boston Harbor, the waterfront there got really flooded out. So tough on those people and tough on the insurance, I'm sure. And it'll be tough on all our insurance rates because it's all kind of guided by the rest of the country. So if insurance is spending a lot of money on everybody else, it affects all of us. Anyway, without any further ado, let's tear this puppy apart. So we've got a little screw on the bottom here, hold the lens on. I do not know what car these are off of. It says Twilight Headlight. So I don't know if these came off a 30s Ford. There's really nothing on here to let me know what they would have come off of. This is all glass, I mean it's beautiful. I'm glad I've got them. But it says two light headlight and it says top up here. Let me show you that closer. I don't know if you can see that back there. If I get the just right, yeah, see that right there? It says two light headlight and that says top. So if any of you guys, gals out there know what this is from, I'd love to know. I fell in love with them. I bought them. I said these will work good on my project. And I had these. These are like I had these before I even started the project. Because when you see something, when you see something in the antique world, buy it. Because he'll you know he'll say, oh, I'll come back and get it. Some other guy grabbed it. So, so here's the bulb that's in here. This is a six volt bulb. A lot of you guys already know this, but for the people who don't, a six volt bulb, see that? These two posts here. They're right across from each other. 
And on a typical bulb we had in all our you know, 50s, 60s, 70s cars, probably into the 80s, and maybe still using them now here and there, um, before halogen, the 12 volt bulb, this post is up here. So they're diagonally across from each other. That way you can't put a six volt bulb in a 12 volt car or a 12 volt bulb in a six volt, vice versa. Because if you have a six volt and a 12 volt, as soon as you hit the switch, it'll burn that bulb right out. So there's your lesson on bulbs and the typical 12 volt bulb was an 1157. Um, and those were back when I had my old Mopar and all that stuff. So in today's world, halogen, we want bright lights. So the uh, people who are texting while they're driving will see us long before they get to us. So there's a good reason to have halogen light bulbs. A couple of brass screws in here. And just seeing the, you know, the era, things are brass. And this is, uh, this is a brass pan that's been chromed on the inside, you know. Not like today's products that are all plastic. So it says, depressed beam headlamp top. But again, nothing written on there that would tell me a maker or manufacturer or anything like that. So here's the inside guts. You want to see that. And we're going to remove all this stuff right here. Now get you guys a little closer to the action. I just have to stay focused on where I am there. Let me get the air on. Well, it's uh, the middle of January. Time flies, the holidays are gone. Now we have that long wait until springtime, but until then, we'll stay busy. Now this screw is brass and on the end, I've never seen this before, but on the end they they notched it. Where the hell are you? You see that notch right there? They notched it and they bend it out so the it won't unthread off of the uh, off of that screw when you lose your light. But that must have been their idea of Loctite back in the day. So I've got to unbend this little here. Push that up through. Grind it off.
So you didn't see any sparks because that is hot. Because that is brass. You see it there. I'm not getting up. So that's brass. And then the bottom of this screw, back of the light bulb, had a little spring on it too, pushing that uh, pushing that piece forward. Pushing the light bulb forward. So probably gave it some uh, some vibration action, like a little shock absorber, you know what I mean? So there's a six volt bulb holder. You can see it has the little notches on the, you know, the same level on side to side. Now like a 12 volt. So we got that ground out. We're gonna punch the rest of that, and those guts out. Now that's all cleaned out. So now, as you can see, on the other side, we've got that hole going all the way through for our wire now. The wires. So we're going to push that piece back down where it came from originally. And we'll bend that tab that was holding that in place back in there. So now, our wire connector will stay in place, and that will be that. Now, we've got our new halogen bulb. Right here, with this protector on, protect it from me. They say you don't want to touch them. I guess you don't want to get grease on them or something. I don't understand what that's all about. But we will not touch. There's two little tabs here I've got to take off. of this where this old screw was I'm going to replace that with a modern 832 so here's a New screw to go in the back. It's 832, which means the number 8, 32 threads per inch. Put that in the back.
So, put this aside. Now we've got this lamp where this has to go in, reflector. So I'm going to cut this off the back here. There's that. And now we have to drill out this head. It ain't easy. All right, so checking the camera to see if you're in there. Okay, guys, so we got through that. Now, for this to fit in there, we need a little bit more. I want to get that rim in there. See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? So we'll move to plan B. which is the Dremel tool with a nice little grinding tip on there.
Yapılar. Couple of Raymond Burrs in there, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Well, I haven't put a video on in a couple of weeks because I've been busy. Busier than one arm paper hanger, hanging paper. And uh, that's busy, brother. Yeah, I've just been doing some stuff. Can't all be fun and games, you know? You gotta do other things. Catch up on your work. That fits like a glove on Michael Jackson. Now, on the opposite side, the hard part is we have to put this little ring on there, which is no easy task. So, you learn on the first one. So, this is the second one, as we said. So, I took a socket, put it on this side, flip it over, take the protective cover off momentarily, put that ring on there, hold it down with a couple of fingies, Just like that, through the magic of camera, we have our new halogen bulb with a modern three-point connector, high beam, low beam, ground, see? And that's in there, perfect. Boom, boom, boom. Couldn't be happier with that, really cool. All right, so. What we're going to do next here, over here, I'm going to put that protective cover back on there momentarily. Keep that sucker protected. Protected like wild eagles. Now, this is our modern connector for our wiring. And what we're going to do is... I'm going to mark these wires because once they're gone, they're gone. You know what I'm saying? So, here's our structiones. This is, uh, you know, instructions for everybody in the planet. It says, remove your existing socket from the center of your reflector. Punch, drill, or file existing hole to one inch diameter. Install a new quartz halogen socket with press nut on the back side. Apply a bead of silicone between the socket and the reflector. Connect wires as shown in drawing below. So uh, it says, do not touch bulb with your bare fingers. Clean glass bulb with alcohol. I guess I might have to drop that, out, that uh, bulb in a shot of Jack Daniels before I put it on. But this was the other part that went on the back that didn't work. So... Um, this, you know, here had to go through his, and then this would clamp down around it and hold it in. Well, guess what, guys? Through manufacturing, wherever this comes from, I'm not saying what I think it comes from, but wherever it comes from, um, this didn't fit all the way in. You know, nothing just, nothing worked properly. So, I don't know what the deal was, but uh, anyway... We didn't use them. We did it as usual. I just went my own route and we're good. There's nothing wrong with this setup. It's absolutely perfect. Now, one thing we do need to know is when you hold this like this here with your instructions, low beam is on the top, high beam is on the right, ground is on the left. So what we're going to do is 
I'm gonna take a piece of yellow tape. We're gonna put a G on there for ground. And we'll double check that because I have ADD. So uh, I had to do everything four or five times, which sucks. That's why I got straight D's in high school. But I thought were pretty good. Now you get ground on there. I'm going to go for high. And very important that you know this when you're wiring, otherwise you're going to do a lot of backtracking or having your buddy turn the switch on and off while you change the wires around six times. High beam. And of course, low beam. L for low. How low can you go? And even though there's only one wire left, because of who I am, I'm double checking. Low beam. You know, guys, better to check two, three, you know, I'd rather check two or three times and have it wrong. It's easier now. Down the road, you're like, what? How come that doesn't work? Well, that's why. Sometimes you mark things out, even though, even though you're positive, you did it right. Now, we're going to take all this here, and we're going to put it in a piece of shrink wrap. I want to protect these wires from where it goes through this hole here. I want to protect those wires from any chafing because I did grind that off. Probably got a sharp edge to it. In fact, I know it does. So we're not going to have to deal with that down the road. We'll just take care of it right now. All I do is take those little tapes, wound them up into a circle, jam it all in here, run it through. One off the bottom. Look at that. That's all you need. I do not have a lighter. And all my torches are on a, one of my apartments that we're redoing, so I am going old school. And we're just going to shrink this stuff down. Just with a match. That's it. Shrunk down. Our wires are protected from chafing through. We're marked off. Because once we get it inside the light, we're not going to be able to see that connector anymore. So now we know ground high and low. Easy cheesy. Now we're going to put this connector on here. Now we're already set up in there. We'll put this up through. Oops, sorry. Don't need to get it out. Going the wrong way. 50 50 chance? You're wrong. telling you, as humans evolve, eventually they're going to give us a third arm. There you have it. Plenty of room in there. We're going to keep plenty of wire in there. So if this thing goes bad eventually, we can just pull it out, unplug, and we're good. So we want to have... I don't even know, one thing to consider, guys, always have room for the future because even though it's a new halogen bulb, 
you're like, oh, it's brand new. That should last 45 years. And, you know, three days from now, it's burnt out. Because that is the way it happens. We all been there, done that. We got three, four t-shirts to say it. Been there, done that. Been there, done that, got the hat and the t-shirt. Now I'm not gonna put the lenses on just yet because I am going to wash these. I'm also going to wash those lights with, uh, with uh, alcohol and make sure I have no finger grease on them because I don't want that to heat up and blow out on me in the first 25 minutes we're running it. So now you can see I'm here. I'll run my wires from my harness up into here, hook them all up, make those connections waterproof with shrink wrap. I always have lots of shrink wrap around. I've got all kinds of patterns of this stuff. We'll shrink it on there, make those waterproof. And uh, then we'll have our coil coming out of here. It's a uh, chrome, um, you know, wire harness that'll go into our radiator cover and it will look pretty as a picture, old school, 20s, Duesenbergy, you know, you know what we're going for. And I think that's pretty cool. So that is today's video. Um, refurbishing our headlights to modern 12 volt setup. So I hope you enjoyed that, guys. I hope you're enjoying your Sunday like I am. And uh, let's see, we're over 34 minutes. I'll give you a quick look at the car, what we're doing here now. And we're into wiring. Yeehaw! Now, as confusing as this may look, I know exactly what's going on. So that's the important part. These are all just looms that are heading one end and part of them are heading for the front end. I got my uh, fuse box mounted up front there. I started doing some wiring yesterday when I had a little bit of time and wiring in the blinkers, the, the blinker switch here. And uh, this is the key, which I'm not gonna need because we're using this you know, Model A Ford. We don't need a lot of wiring for the key setup. Uh, just hot to the um, coil. And then we're just going to put have front lights, rear lights, blinkers, flashers, and, uh, and that's about it. And we're going to run our voltmeter and our blinker setup. And very simplistic. So I hope everybody enjoyed. I'll give you another quickie of the car. This is where we're at. We added a new character into the windshield. He's saying, slow down. And there's old Frank going, oh man, I want to hit the gas, baby. All right, you guys and gals, everybody have a wonderful rest of your day. Um, we're working on it. It's all we can do. Earl, say goodbye to everybody, Earl. Nothing. All right, Earl. That's okay. Hey, everybody. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you soon. See you soon. Bye-bye.